and I'm yet again back for the third time today. You must be getting sick of me by now. I hope not, but because we've still got plenty more to cover. Anyway, yes, now then. Solomon Cain. I prepared this time, which is amazing. Right, Solomon Cain. Solomon Cain, who is here? This is Solomon it Cain. I can't actually see over the book to see whether or not that's fully centred. I assume it is. Right, that's Solomon Cain. Aside from the fact that the sash around his waist should be quite a you know, bright green rather than red. But hell, you know what, that's such a good illustration, I can live with that. This is the Savage World of Solomon Cain. Right, now, just before I go into the book, Solomon Cain was a character created by Robert E. Howard. And if you don't know who Robert E. Howard was, I can probably give you a damn good idea. He was the man who created Conan. Uh, so what you like about Conan, I don't care, because Solomon Cain came first... And he was, in my opinion, the more awesome character, though he didn't have as much written about him. Solomon Cain is set... Well, Solomon Cain's adventures take place from between 1570 to 1590. The actual books themselves, the actual stories themselves, were written in 1920? Possibly between 1910 and Well, possibly between 1910 and 1930, whatever, because he actually died in 1936, and he was born in... 1906, so he only lived 30 years, Robert E. Howard. Uh, poor bloke. Anyway, um, great loss, actually. Let's we'll see what you like about Conan, uh, you know, and all, and Krull of Atlantis and all that sort of stuff. He wrote those years and years and years ago, and they're still names that everybody knows to this day. Um, you know, uh, sort of, he, he originally wrote his tales for, um, you know, publications called Weird Tales and all that sort of thing, with Savage Worlds and Weird Wars and everything like this. Basically, it's almost as if Savage Worlds was designed for this sort of pulp, uh, you know, sort of storytelling. Um, however, Solomon Cain is a Puritan, mixed in with a little of the Cavalier, with perhaps some of the Pagan. Uh, he himself is a great believer in God, though he's a character with many, many, many uh, sort of altercations with himself. As, you know, he sort of believes, God exist, however he is absent, but he sort of rectifies this fact by telling himself that because God is absent, he is allowed to walk God's path. And you know, he's an interesting, complicated character, unlike Conan, who's pretty much in your face, you know exactly where you stand with the character. This guy's a bit of a mystery. All, you, all we really know is that he is gripped by this immense wanderlust to wander the globe, and... He claims, as I said, he claims to be a Puritan in God's name, but to be perfectly honest, quite a lot of the adventures uh, focus around Solomon Cain's personal sense of justice. Because whenever he deems that uh, an, a mis an injustice has actually occurred, he flies into almost a murderous rage to protect the weak, the innocent, until everything has been sorted. So, in that sense, he's a bit of a hero slash superhero. However, like I said, awesome character. Now then, before I go into the book... The Savage Tales of Solomon Cain. Not the Savage Worlds, but the Savage Tales of Solomon Cain. This is a 320-odd page book full of Solomon Cain short stories. And if you just like good literature, and I'm quite serious about it, if you just simply want a good book to read and you like a good bit of literature, you can't go far wrong. Um, yeah, okay, I mean, it's very, very sort of Solomon Cain, Puritan, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not in your face trying to convert you Christian, though, so don't get the wrong idea. Um, but, basically, uh, yeah, some of the stories are fragments, others are complete. Uh, most of the stories are only, you know, even the complete stories are only like 70, 50 pages long, whatever. But it's enough. It's enough to sink your teeth into. And I honestly think that's really bloody good. If you can find it, I would seriously pick that up. Um, one thing you are going to have to f uh, work with, though, it simply... Um, uh, ignore more to the point is that uh, Robert E. Howard was indeed a child of his time, and basically he he was um, you know he was a Texas backwater boy. I mean, to be perfectly honest, no offense to any Texans, but back then you know where you know communication wasn't as far travelled, all this sort of stuff. He was a bit cut off, and when you read the book, the only thing you have to be aware of, and he doesn't go into this in great detail, but 
Uh, Solomon Kane, a lot of his adventures take place in Africa. I, I, yeah, I, I'm sorry, this video is ru is running over. It was just my description of who is Solomon Kane, and I'm not even getting into the book and how awesome it is. So, you know, for this, I apologise, but yes, yeah, I'll come to that in another video. I mean, I'm in the mood to talk today. And uh, but yeah, so when he does v venture into Africa and whatnot, you just have to realise that he is a child of his time. It was written in his time, and Anybody, like I said, this isn't meant to offend anybody, but people in in his book, um, the Africans are uh, the Africans of a coloured orientation are described as savages, ape-like brows, all this sort of stuff, which is not true. Allow me to say this right now and uh, straight away. So, like I said, it's never it never really becomes a huge racist issue, okay? Um, but like I said, it is in there. You just have to ignore it because, or don't read the book in, at all. That's your choice. However, like I said, it's just it's something to be aware of because I don't want you to bl I don't need to go into it head first and then think, well, ew, you bastard. So anyway, um, getting back to the tale at hand, yes, Solomon Kane, another fantastic illustration here, I think. And Solomon Kane above a yeti slash great ape thing, you know, wielding his trusty trusty rapier. Now. I'm going to get into this book, and then sort of all this sort of stuff. Um, Solomon Cain is unique in the Savage Worlds setting, because in actual fact, this is one of the few books that actually incorporates, in a rules section, all the Savage Worlds rules, albeit slightly tailored to Solomon Cain. So if you want to just pick up Solomon Cain, and you don't want to pick up this, you can, because this contains everything you need, and this is what I like so much about this book, right? <laughs> This book has everything you could possibly want. It's an all-in-one publication. Uh, yes, there was a cut there because my camera randomly cut off, so here we go. Uh, right, yes. Um, it, like I said, it's just... It does have everything you need. It's got characters, it's got your... Uh, you know, it's got your rule section, it's got your characters, it's got your gear of the time. It's, now, the way it really changes is in the magic system, which I'll come into in what is inevitably going to be my two-part of video. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yes. And not only that, although it's not a campaign you can simply pick up and play, right, be warned, you do have about 100 pages in here actually devoted to sort of uh, an overarching plot for your campaign, which, because Robert E. Howard was big pals with H.P. Lovecraft, Cthulhu, a lot of the Cthulhu mythos is actually in here. I'll come into that too. But my point being, there's also a very extensive section on uh, on how to build your own adventures and how to actually, and there's even an adventure generator. And, like I said, it's, there's also a very good beastery in the back. Admittedly, there are only 100 critters, but it's so easy to make your own as well that, <laughs> you know, this is a complete system. This is a complete book. There should be more like this. Uh, like I said, it's probably one of the most beautiful, most beautifully laid out and designed books I have actually ever bought. And I say that, and I, I like my books. I treat them like sacred objects. That's just because I do. I know some people abuse them like hell, but this is me. Um, and I really cannot recommend this enough. And even if you just like to buy a role-playing book, I know I'm weird like this, just to read it and have it on your shelf. You can't go wrong. However, I bought this for 26 to £27. Pounds. It's quite an expensive book, but as I said, it's because you get in everything in one go. Um, right, now then, I shall go into the differences in the systems, and actually explain the Savage World systems a bit, uh, in the next video coming up, still on the, uh, still on the topic of Solomon Cain, and I'll also go into what I think are a cracking few adventures, just to get you started to experiment with the system. Right, I shall be right back for part two of Savage Worlds, the Savage World of Solomon Cain. See ya!